right? Um, X Factor Omnibus by Peter David. Uh, this one, I was very excited to pick it up. Um, early Strowman, uh, X Men Universe Strowman. Um, I did like Strowman's work on, what was it, Alien Legion? That, that stuff was fun. Um, but I do prefer, I, di I did like the uh, his X Factor run as well. Uh, this also includes work by uh, Del Kion, uh, Jay Lee, early Jay Lee, early Jay Lee, and then also uh, early Quesada. Lot, actually, there's actually probably more Joe Casada in here than uh, Strowman. But this was a pivotal issue, uh, this cover in particular, whatever issue this was. Um, New Direction, Strowman was taking over X-Factor. You had Will Spertaccio taking over Uncanny X-Men. Jim Lee on his own X-Men book. Uh, Rob Liefeld starting uh, the X-Force comics. You had, uh, who the hell else? Todd McFarlane on Spidey his own spidey so yeah let's check this out i'm probably gonna skip a bit here and there um this thing is thick and uh just so you guys know it's it's probably still pretty affordable uh probably one of the lesser popular editions for omnibuses but a lot of gold in here a lot of very good anchors as well early dan panosian too panosian on inks yeah, so uh, I'm going to point out, though, uh, Mike Mignola covers. Uh, look at that. No feet. No feet. Bunch of smoke. Um, the Keown issues in here are actually, uh, they are collected in the uh, Peter David Hulk Omnibus 2. Okay, so the Incredible Hulk Omnibus 2, the Peter David Omnibus. I guess he's got three or four of them. Uh, but anyways, yeah, uh, Volume 2 has all of the Keown issues plus a lot of bonuses um, I did a video on it, so you can go back and check it and just search it. All right, so we got Jarvanen. Jarvanen was an up-and-comer who didn't really do a whole lot. Uh, Jarvanen, for for a short bit there, was kind of on the heels of uh, Joe Moderera, as far as like someone who could kind of take over on a more regular um, Art Adamsy kind of style. And I'm not really sure what happened, but uh, they kind of fell off. But yeah, these pages are, are cool. Uh, so yeah, we got Jarvan in this on a fill-in here. Let me just flip through this sucker. All right, and then we get to uh, the all-new X Factor, Peter David, uh, Larry Stroman on art, and this was all design aspect. This stuff was sort of like the clean version of early Jay Lee. Jay Lee was like the messy version of this. Um, the You know, it, all about the design. All about the design, the force perspective. A lot of uh, straight edge work in there. Um, very, I don't know, I would almost say like a Patrick Nagel-esque quality to it. Just like Jay, you know, Jay, Jay was looking at a lot of Nagel um, as well. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure um what Strowman was looking at but it definitely has that that feel to it um alien legion did not have as much of this it was a little more traditional to me um uh, but cool style altogether um great layouts a lot of energy um especially considering you know the the colors at the time that digital coloring was like not even really a thing they were still you know working in flats and two-tone and a little bit of little bit of cut and grads um, in print. It's a pretty cool figure right here. But yeah, so, that, so uh, you had a lot of experimental styles. Um, this thing screams 90s, and it's going to scream more 90s as it goes. Um, let's see, so then the following issue right here. Uh, awesome cover. These covers were grabbing us. Uh, me and my buddies, we'd hit the comic shops and... Man, we're picking this stuff up like crazy. Um, you know, and it, the X-Men Universe stuff was an easy sell. You never really knew what you'd be introduced to, new characters or whatnot. And uh, with Homage Studios in particular, they were introducing so much cool, so much cool stuff that um, none of us really knew the ins and outs. There was no internet, you know. We weren't getting any insider uh, info 
the comic shop owner was usually the one kind of telling us, you know, what was up with books or uh, creative teams had changed or whatnot. Yeah, all this is fun. Again, great layouts. Great layouts. The panel stacks, everything. Re <laughs> the hell? I don't even remember that. But yeah, I got all these in floppy form. I, I probably read them as soon as I got them home, and then they went in the bag and board and just stayed in darkness. Yeah, more Stroman. And this stuff, it's very, very, very powerful work. Yeah, this one looks like it, was, it may have been drawn a little bit faster than the issues prior to it. A lot of large panels where it's just kind of utilizing just the long stroke and the shadows. You got Sinister here, you can tell from the this little forehead gem emblem. Yeah, so these are all fun. Yeah, I don't know. And I think this stuff was it was making an impact um, as far as my little group was concerned um, of comic nerds. Uh, you know, and, and I, it probably had a little bit to do also with him being able to get his uh, his tribe book put out, at least the first issue uh, by Image Comics. Uh, you know, not really sure what happened there, but uh, he did the first book. And then uh, two and three, I think he did. He did two and three independently. I actually have. I think he did four books. One of them I got from a show. Uh, I wasn't even aware that it had existed. But anyhow, this stuff here. Uh, man, this is an awesome cover. Um, I feel like he's the uh, probably the lowest rated, undervalued, uh, ex office creator uh, from this specific time period. Um, but he was really, really talented. Yeah, I would say Strowman and then probably Protasio, to be honest. I think Wills, Wills was always sort of in Jim Lee's shadow. Um, but this stuff here has it has a little bit of a, uh, a fashion forwardness to it, uh, of almost like a like a Walt Simonson, but not. This is a lot more fluid. Simonson is a lot more stoic, uh, stiff figures, uh, super consistent. But you know, if there aren't things going on, it can get a little, a little boring. Here you go. <laughs> Thick. All right, so let's go and go through this. I'm not even like a quarter through this book. Uh, I do, I do dig his representation of uh, Mr. Sinister. It's, it's pretty cool. I like the fact that Sinister does not look like Colossus in these panels. Uh, that's one of the down the downfall. Most artists would draw him. It would just basically look like Colossus with a cape. Uh, so I do appreciate that his version is is uh, slightly different. All right, and then we get the um, the Keon issues here of the Hulk. Uh, these ones here. The reason they're in here is because there's a crossover where he fights uh, X X Factor. There you are. So that's why they, they threw these in. I would have preferred, you know, just the fact that this this material is in that Hulk omnibus, I would have preferred they substituted it with something else. Um, but there might be some continuity issues uh, with the X-Factor books uh, contained in here where they needed to include this stuff. Um, let's see. So this is Rainy. I was going to say this is a little more detailed. So this is Tom Rainy art here. Uh, Stroman cover. But I was like, man, this detail does not look like Strowman. He doesn't do a lot of tick lines. He does mainly uh, uh, heavy, heavy black shading, and then uh, not a lot of fades. You know, more, more towards a Mignola versus a, a burn. This is more towards like a burn look. But yeah, so we'll go and skip through this. So that might actually be close to the end of Strowman's run. He did, he wasn't on it an incredibly long time. Because uh, he did he did jump ship and go to Image pretty early on. Um, this is such an awesome cover right here. So yeah, you got another another Keon issue. Um, again, I already covered this. The Keon the Keon Dell stuff I've already covered in another video. 
can't flip and talk at the same time. What issue is this? Okay, so this was 77. I'm not sure I own this book in a floppy form. I may have missed this one. It just, it's not ringing a bell for some reason. Uh, I'm sure my buddy's got it, though. Yeah, so this stuff's fun. Yeah, and it, this stuff's crazy. Some of this anatomy is just insane. Um, but it's still, you know, super fun. So 90s. So 90s. Um, yeah, and again, it's it's real hard for me to put a finger on what his influence was. Um He's definitely not going towards like a Jim Lee or a Liefeld or McFarlane. He's not leaning any direction like that. Um, none of his fades or details, and it, none of his rendering is is leaning that direction. So I'm not sure. Maybe he just kind of was doing his own thing, you know, and streamlining it. Um, but regardless, it's it's awesome work. So let's see, and then Joe Q. We got a Casada cover here, things to come. So yeah, Casada does take over. Um, I think before Casada though. Okay, so check this out. Pencils by Larry Stroman and Brandon Peterson. So this is early Peterson too. Um, man, and I'm not familiar with Brandon's work this early on. Uh, he might. This actually probably is Brandon right here. He's uh, Brandon was sort of an emulator. Um, anything he would be on, I noticed he kind of would emulate the popular artist on it. Like this is definitely a Brandon page. Most of these actually might be. The rendering does not feel like Strowman. It looks like he's trying to do some sort of a, a Strowman hybrid thing with like. A, what became Wildstorm mixed with mixed with Larry's work. Yeah, I'm not sure. This feels like a Larry page. Those faces scream Strowman. This thing, I'm not really sure right here. There's way too much rendering. I feel like Strowman would have just dropped a little more of this kind of thing going on. And I'm not seeing those geometrics inside of these lines. A little bit of soft lines going on. So this, pro this is probably... Uh, <clears throat> Brando. All right, and then we got this X-Factor uh, annual here. I got this one. There's a Casada story in it. You got a, a Derek Robertson story in it, and then you also got a Joe Mad, early Joe Mad. Um, this was a cool Mojo story here. So, yeah, if you do decide to pick this up, I would say you're probably going to get an equal amount of uh, mentorship, some tutoring, tutelage through uh, the page if you're good at deciphering what's kind of going on underneath of everything. Uh, equally from Strowman and Casada, Because uh, Casada was still kind of trying to prove himself in this time. Yeah, I mean, he did he did a few posters, I remember. He did some fill-in books, but he wasn't really... He wasn't making the mark the way that, um, you know, Jim Lee... Like the Image founders. He wasn't making that same kind of a mark. He was more of a... Uh, Kind of a utility artist. I'm not really sure how to explain it. Good work. Good enough for good enough to get you know get us to drop you know a five dollar bill, but not necessarily um, you know indie creator level quite yet. I think the level is it maybe just not the popularity. I guess I should reword that. So yeah, but this stuff's awesome, man. Like this, like I generally don't like um, a lot of silhouettes, but just the shading, like this, there's purpose behind this. And I and I kind of wonder too um, how Casada's early work, like in these X Men books, uh, would have looked with like um, modern coloring, because he was doing a lot of stuff that actually would require like uh, color holds and some hard light layers and, and hard rim light and stuff. I, I almost feel like it would have leveled them up like big time. So, yeah, flat colors. Definitely all these guys suffered from it a little bit <clears throat> and had to compensate with the heavy line art, the heavy crot hatching and stuff. You know, they had to kind of pick up where coloring couldn't couldn't do it. Um, it's a pretty cool pin up there by Sienkiewicz, Quicksilver. Let's see, he's going past this up. And then we're getting to some of the off issues. Let's see. So you got a Casada cover. You got Jim Fern. 
gem fern pencils. Uh, let's see. <laughs> this is a Strowman. That's really strange. It doesn't feel like a Strowman piece, but so you got Strowman there. Um, this actually looks like Strowman. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this issue might have been rushed. This is this feels. This is a. This is an old school Wills neck right here. Wills used to do these necks that were like a foot and a half long. Yeah, not really sure. Um, like this is bizarre. It might have been. He might have just been doing some rough pencils, and the inker just didn't have a handle on the direction that his style is. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. He was making a race for the money. He had to finish these books so he could make that image money. All right. Um, that's a pretty cool cover right there. Al Milgram Inks. Huh. Might have been a rush job. Uh, Cyber, very cool character. Uh, you, would, you would have seen him in Marvel Comics Presents. Uh, there was a Wolverine run drawn by Sam Keith featuring Cyber. It was super awesome. Super awesome run. All right, so we get more uh, Strom in there. I'm going to do a race for the finish here, guys. Uh, let's see. All right, and then Joe Q. Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, the next chapter. Who's drawing this stuff? Rurik Tyler. Don't know him. Don't recognize him. Very cool Casada cover there. Let's flip through this shit. Man, that is. This is like. This is terrible. This is terrible. Um, might be why I don't know him. Yeah, this is cringe. I know I don't own these floppy. This is cringe. This is terrible. This face is not so bad. This is terrible. That is terrible. Yeah, some of this 90s stuff, um, it's like bad, bad, bad D-list versions of Liefeld. Like, they, they were taking some of what he did and trying to apply it, thinking that's what made him good, or popular at least. And it just... Oh, man, this is so bad. Um... Yeah, whose idea was this? All right, so then you got uh, another Strowman cover here, Executioner Song Part Two, Issue Eighty Four. Jay Lee fill in, uh, man. Jay Lee, Jay Lee, all about Bisley, all about Simon. Uh, if you look at this stuff here, this is this is straight up. You could have told me back in the day this was Bisley, and I would have believed you. I would have believed you. Uh, good work though, good work. I do miss this era of Jay's work. Um. As much as I poke at it, I appreciate it. I would not mind having some 92-93 Jay Lee on my wall. Um, yeah, and again, uh, Jay, a master designer. Uh, storytelling, not always right there, but um, understands shapes, flow, Sh uh, shadows that's a badass panel my buddies hated i remember that they they would gripe about that he blacked out wolverine's entire face right here and that might have been a uh, like a mistake but i kind of dig it i kind of like that you know he stands out from the rest it's just so dark right there some sinister another fill-in with a jay lee cover badass cover yeah this stuff's this stuff's really, really good. Um, this stuff's way better, way better than the than the Namor run that he had drawn. Um, but yeah, and then obviously, you know, this this was all leading up to Jay Lee working on um, Youngblood, Youngblood Strike File, and then doing uh, covers for Rob, and he did some posters too. Uh, he did some posters for Extreme, I remember. And went to work for Jim Lee and then kind of did his own thing. Hellshock. And then he disappeared. Came back again. This is an interesting one. This feels like Jay Lee mixed with Mignola because of the, the rocks. It feels a little too clean for him. This is a very cool cover. 
as well. But yeah, uh, <laughs> he's like, what if you take Simon Bisley and mix it with Patrick Nagel? That's what you get. That's what you get. Really good looking females and dudes that look like they're 900 years old, but drawn awesomely. All right, so yeah, all this is fun. Let's go and chop through here. I want to get to more of the... Uh, this video is going to be way too long. Um, let's see here. So this is like a Ren and Stimpy thing, isn't it? Oh, Rain and Stimpy. Yeah, I was like, that totally looks like Ren and Stimpy. This is Casada. Uh, he has a very unique approach to uh, shading on faces. Very easy to pick out if, you've, if you're familiar with his work from way back. Um, he kind of abandoned this for a bit. He did a little bit of this kind of shading, though, in... Uh, what book was it? It's one of the Dare, the Daredevil book that he worked on with uh, uh, Kevin Smith. He did. He he was getting back into the uh, more of the noir approach for shading faces uh, for dramatical effect. This is a cool cover right here. Random. Yeah, I never really cared for the character, uh, but he draws them very well. That's a fun panel right there. I like the little teeth. Yeah, so this stuff's cool. Uh, but yeah, Joe uh, Casada right here. Um, yeah, top of his game. And again, it was like this stuff. This stuff. Uh, the covers were enough to uh, to to trick me, young the me, into buying into all this. Um, and if I didn't like it enough, I wouldn't have got the omnibus, you know. Uh, this is not my cup of tea. Oh, here we go. Okay, back to more Casada. Very cool cover. This is an awesome design. You got the hole, and then you get to see the team right through them. Yeah, pretty common 90s pose jumping at you. This feels, I mean, this is in probably, you know, 50 comics during a year span. The jumping at you shot. This is really cool. Yeah, th this era of Casada, a little underappreciated, and also Marvel was kind of in the. Uh, they were no longer in the spotlight. So th when this, when this, probably a little before this issue, um, Marvel was already kind of taking a backseat uh, to the collectors. So a lot of this stuff didn't get you know, witnessed by enough people at the time because everyone was obsessed with, you know, Mark Silvestri and Jim Lee and Liefeld, Del Keown. Uh, Schumacher. Uh, we got a buzz story in here. Interesting. I don't own this book, so... Um, this is a Casada pinup right here, though. Uh, yeah, this, I, this... That might be why I didn't buy that. It's not very good. Uh, you got the uh, the holographic sticker covers, if you guys remember those. Fatal Attractions. Uh, is this Casada? It looks like Casada. Pretty sure it's Casada. Yeah. Yes, it is Casada. Uh, he actually gets co plot on this with Lobdell. Scotty Lobdell, uh, my least favorite X Men author. All right. Yeah, so again, uh, good flow, um, really fun to look at. I'm gonna flip through here. We gotta end this. We gotta end this video here. Um, what else is going on back here? Got some backup stories. I'm not sure what they're from. Uh, cool cover. This Mignola cover right here. I've always really liked this cover piece. Um, I got a black and white of it saved somewhere. All right, and then we get to the bonus. Afterwards, you get to see uh, promotional art right here. Uh, these look like they're scanned off of the actual promotional printed material. You can see the dot matrix going on. Uh, so you get Havoc and Polaris. Uh, the second printing, Marvel is doing this for a bunch of books. Uh, you get this gold-ish kind of ink. It's like a sepia gold ink that they would print. Uh, Ghost Rider had one on the Glow in the Dark. This one, 
Um, they also did it for Hulk, what was it, 377 or something like that. The Keon one with the explosion behind him with the green background. I'm pretty sure they did that for that one as well. And then uh, there were some Jim Lee books they did it with. And then uh, some of Jim Valentino stuff too. It's a cool pinup right here. Let's see, who drew that? So you got Johnson. Yeah, that other piece is badass. Badass Keon right here. This is really interesting because this is a nice printing of this. And I feel like this was printed in that other one, maybe, but as a scan of the printed original. So maybe they found uh, a better file to use for this one. Uh, early Greg, look at this. Greg Capullo he used to sign his name with the, with the circles. Um, yeah, so early Greg Capullo. This is before Capullo took over on X-Force. Uh, badass poster right here. This is uh, Joe Casada and uh, Joseph. I think it's Rubenstein. Yep. Uh, Strowman. This is a very nice piece of players here. Cool pin up there as well. Totally 90s. 90s to the max. Uh, early Adam Hughes, guys. Adam Hughes right here. Then you get some of these uh, comic art fan scans. Get the cover. Uh, I don't remember what this is. Promotional. Oh, this was the corner box already created. Yeah, so this is the best way you're going to see it. This thing is small as hell. It's printed about yay big, like, you know, two and a half by one inch. Um, man, so good. Uh, some J. Lee originals. Look at that yellowing. That's wild. Must be white out. Yeah, more promo stuff. Some uh, covers here. More originals. What is this piece? Oh, so these are pages used because they had double page spreads. So they had to balance the book out. So this was an additional page added to something. Um, trading cards here. Uh, you get to see the Jim Lee um, X Factor based character cards. Um, Marvel was a series two. Oh, series three. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I have series three. I do have this one. I got the Jesco set. The Joe Jesco. Uh, painted set those were those were really cool um let's see got some casada illustrated cards here uh x-men series 2 i do actually have those uh some recolors you got a tom smith digitally uh remaster and then you get another remaster for a different version of the uh another trade uh veronica gandini uh you get to see the keown remaster colors um uh, mark pasella uh, Avalon, Avalon's uh, colorist did something on here. The colors are good. The artwork is terrible. Uh, and then we got a uh, Strowman uh, with uh, Chris Sotom. Well, it says Soto Color. I think that's Chris Sotomayor. Um, always does good work. Uh, a color remaster of the J. Lee. Um, what's his face? Strife. And then a, a Sotomayor uh, recolor remaster version of uh, this X Factor cover by Casada Milgram. So there you go. Um, I think I got this. No, it's got a hundred dollar tag on it. You could probably, I don't know. I don't imagine it being more than like 75 ships. So I'm in this now. Thanks for hanging out. Check out my other videos.